I need a lot of down payment in Vancouver. Gary is showing us average homes of 1.2 million plus, 20% down in that situation, 240. If you're just starting off, pretty hard to get into the market, right? Um, I need a lot of income. Big mortgage, big income. So, but I'll show you it's, it's actually uh, easier than you think, okay? Uh, lowest rate is the best. While rate is important, there's another factor there to keep in mind. So not all mortgages are created equal. I can't, as you build your portfolio, you might be thinking, I can't get any more mortgages or I can't get any more properties. I'll explain how you can overcome those hurdles. And insured mortgage, is it a good option or bad option? So I'll go through that example as well. And when you may want to use that to actually grow your portfolio. Okay. So I need a lot of money to start investing in real estate. Mm, not really. Most people, when they think about real estate, they think I have to invest in my backyard. True, Vancouver is a great market, but you're also seeing that push uh, going eastward as well because uh, Vancouver pricing is so high right now. Um, it's creating, uh, over the next uh, 25 years, so by 2041, Greater Vancouver area is gonna have another million people here. Okay, where are they going to fit everybody? The only way is to densify. So when we talk about um, fitting all those people, it's not just in Vancouver, but the greater Vancouver. So you have to look at densification and um, wherever there's um, SkyTrain stops or uh, future uh, light rail transit stops, that's where the growth, the majority of the growth is going to be. So you already see that with the Brentwood Center. Uh, you're seeing that with Oak Ridge, Canby, uh, everything is just expanding based around um, SkyTrain stations. Okay, that's where the densification is going to be happening. For those that don't want to be living in condos or, or townhouses, they're starting to move east, eastward because they want the, the space and the land. Pushing out to Maple Ridge, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, that's all expanding. With the Portman being twinned, you're actually getting more accessibility to those areas. Um, earlier this week, I, on Tuesday, I drove out to Chilliwack. It just took me about 55 minutes to go uh, from Burnaby all the way out to Chilliwack. That was probably about 80 plus kilometers in one hour. So that's pretty, pretty good when you can actually uh, buy for a $400,000 property on Chilliwack versus buying 1.4 here. Um, it's a bit of a, um, um, a kind of a balancing game in terms of what's more important. The way they, um, uh, the current market conditions are within Vancouver, it's basically created a, uh, made a lot of people instant millionaires, especially if they bought it a long time ago. They basically, if they've got a home that's say $1.4 million, they sell it, they got the cash, move out to uh, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and Maple Ridge, you can still get four or 500,000. Then you got about 900,000 to play with in terms of the savings that you can start investing. So if somebody has that, they then are more financially independent, then they can have choices. They don't necessarily need to be working all the time or if they got a pension, then they can kind of scale back spend more quality time with the family, uh, uh, volunteer or travel, whatever it may be. It's more of a better quality of lifestyle. But once they sell out of Vancouver and they move somewhere else, uh, it's pretty difficult for them to buy back into Vancouver because the appreciation out in the valley is not gonna be the same as Vancouver. So that's a, a choice that they're gonna have to make. But in each of those communities, there's a lot of amenities being made available now so they don't necessarily need to come to Vancouver for, for kind of day-to-day -day type of uh, activities. So if we look at, do you need a lot of down payment? No, you don't. If you, you there's properties available even within the greater Vancouver area, that's 200,000 as a condo. Uh, buy that as a purchase, 20% down, and uh, that'd be 40,000, and we treat this as a five-year term. 
So in uh, basically on cash flow basis, if you get $100 per month and uh, over one year you get $1,200, five years you get $6K. Okay? Mortgage pay down over the first five years is basically uh, about 10%, 10, 12%. So you basically, you have a tenant that's acting really as an employee for you. They're going out and um, working every month. They're coming back and they're giving you rents, which includes principal plus interest component to it, right? So that principal component is paying down your mortgage on a monthly basis. And over uh, five years, we'll treat that your mortgage was uh, 160,000 to start. So in five years, you, your balance would be $16,000 less. Okay, as well, even an appreciation of 2% a year, that will give you 10% roughly in, um, uh, in five years, that's 20K. So when we add 6K plus 16 plus 20, that's 42. Your initial investment is 40,000. Your return is 100% in basically um, five years time, right? Approximately compounded, it'd be about 16, 17% a year, but uh, you can't get that in the stock market with all the volatility. You've invested that money in the stock market, even if you have a thousand shares of a company, somebody who has a million shares floods the market, pre-market before you even, you can even decide. You have no control whatsoever. At least with cash flow properties, even in a market where it starts going down, you can kind of ride through the wave because, and the cycle because you've got cash flow during that time. Right? You decide when to basically dispose of the, the property. So even in a situation where, let's just say there's no cash flow and there's no appreciation, so five years later, you're still, it's still at 200,000, you're gonna get 16,000 just from the mortgage pay down. That's 40%. So 8%, from 6 to 8% cent per year compounded, guaranteed. As long as you do your job in terms of uh, making sure there's no vacancy, then you're gonna be earning that. Any questions with that? Yes. Sorry? Um, so, so 100 bucks a month, 1,200 in one year, five years, 6K. Yes, we treat this as a five year term, um, mainly because five years, if you try and, um, that's when the mortgage pay down starts really, it doesn't pick up at, at five years, but once you start uh, going to 10 years, that's when it starts picking up. But if you try and get something that's like a one year, two year, um, it's, it doesn't, you won't see the really big uplift in appreciation yet. So if you want to try to get like refinance in a couple of years, you might not be able to pull much out. So treat it as a five year term investment wise. Yeah, because you, you don't know what's going to happen in two years. It might start going down, right? So you yeah. total gain is 42,000. Yes. The down payment is 40,000. Yep. This is a $2,000 difference. How can I return the 100? Um, the 2,000 divided by the 40 is the 5%. Right? Like you're right here, yeah. um, so six plus 16 plus uh, 20 is 42. Yeah. So you're saying where's the, 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 the difference? This is your initial investment. Yes. Yes, so your gain is actually like you're doubling in that situation. Like your 42K is your, your return. 40,000 yeah. is your return. Yes, so in, in five years time, you have that much equity available. So at that time, I'll go into the next slide afterwards in terms of how you can actually really like supercharge your, your portfolio. Okay. So I'm gonna get into the power, like through this, this is the supercharge, okay? This is what you gotta pay attention to. So if you start with just buying that first property, okay? And all you do is just add 100 bucks into your savings account every month, okay? In, uh, when you start off, in, by year five, 
you'll have enough equity to actually buy the next property. Okay, that hundred bucks per month kind of adds uh, factors in the um, the increase in potential price at that time because you're not buying two hundred through the same price throughout. So there's going to be appreciation along the way. But if you take that every five years, you have enough equity to basically refinance and then buy another amount, you're doubling along the way. So if you do this for 25 years, your um, initial investment of 40K would turn into 1.6 in 25 years, all by itself. Okay? So by 25 years at that time, you're onto your 32nd property. Okay? Just through that doubling effect from your initial investment. Yes, Zingy. So you have 32 properties by the end? Yes. You yeah. Have you're buying your 32nd. Well, like you have 32 from all together? Or yeah, yeah. On? You're onto your 32nd. So if you start off, say, when you're 20, by the time you're 44, no, sorry, 45, you're onto your 32nd. You give it another five years to get to 50, you would be onto your 64th just from that initial, because um, it becomes exponential afterwards, right? So you're always in this situation refinancing the 80%. So we don't know what the rules are going to look like 25 years down the road. So this is what we can just project right now. However, over time, what you, you can still get to 1.6 by starting to pay down your mortgages too. This is equity. That's all it is. So imagine if you have everything paid off, and instead of needing 32 properties, but you only need maybe even you know, just 10, but it's worth 200,000, 10 free and clear properties, that's $2 million right there. So you don't, you don't need, or even eight, you'll still hit 1.6. You don't need to make it complicated. In a sense, the larger your portfolio, the more management you have to do. Like, Vicky, you're in the business. So in this way, it's less is more at that point where it's free and clear, right? So this, imagine if you were getting, in, for this condo, $1,000. Okay, $1,000 and you got free, um, eight properties free and clear. That's 8,000 positive cash flow for you, passive income. So most of us right now, who's focused on, the only way that they're getting income is active income. So active income is when you're trading your time for the dime. So you only get paid when you actually go to work. Who's, who's in that situation? Yeah. So passive income is where we basically um, it's working for you when you're not working or when you're sleeping, when you're on vacation, you're in a washroom, whatever it may be, it's working for you. So some of you guys are, like Gary mentioned, um, Kindle publishing, ebooks and stuff like that. So that's where leverage, like once you create a product, there's leverage after that. So every additional sale that you get, you could be sleeping, you could be driving, whatever, that's passive at that point. So the whole, the idea is to uh, not always just focus on active income because you can only scale so much, okay? Get your active income working for you such that you use your active income to buy assets for you that will generate you passive income, okay? So through that passive income, you want to build enough assets such that it can cover off your daily expenses. So once you've got your daily expenses covered, then whatever's left over, inject that back into your active business to generate even more income to buy more assets. So it's the whole rich dad, poor dad cycle, right? So that's the whole idea so that it can be making your money work harder for you. That's the whole goal so you can have that balance, right? Who works a lot better when they don't have to think about their finances? It's a lot of stress, right? Right, because you, you're always like, you get done with the, whatever you're working on, project, and then you're thinking, okay, I spent so much time working in the business, I didn't work on the business to be able to make sure that the pipeline is full. Right, then you gotta worry about next month and the month after that. 
who gets worried about that? All right. So having something like this kind of smooths things out so that you've got um, a base that's growing over time. Does this make sense? Yeah. So if you have greater appreciation, it's going to go even faster. If you have, you know, zero, if, it, if you have less, then it slows down. But this is kind of the idea. Okay. So I need a lot of income. People think you need a lot of income to be able to invest. It's not true. Okay. On thirty thousand dollars worth of income. Okay, you're buying a rental property. So let's say it's a $450,000 purchase. So you're putting 25% down. You can even do 20% if you want to. $2,000 rent, okay? $3,000 in taxes, $100 in heating. You could actually, you over time, you could start, you could buy one property, okay? And, um, you qualify for that, and you can keep on buying as long as you're, you're only restricted by your down payment. Right? There's no, you buy four properties, $1.8 million um, in terms of assets, 1.35 in mortgages. As long as you have, everybody's capped by two things with regards to buying property. Number one is their down payment, and number two, their ability to qualify for financing. Qualifying for financing is actually easy part. Actually, when you're buying the, uh, a property, the easy, who thinks um, getting, um, what's harder, down payment or financing? Down payment. Yeah, uh, Depends on the situation. The bank's giving you. I don't think either of them are easy. <laughs> Depends. Banks giving you eight, uh, 75 to 80 percent of the money that you need to buy it. So you just need to come up with the 20 or 25 percent. And you might be thinking, "Well, I don't have that." Well, you don't have to have that. Somebody might have that for you. So if you come across a good deal and it makes sense and it's going to make money, the money will find you. So you don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to worry about the money part. The money, find the deal first, okay? And if I have a good team, you either need, there's a book I read from uh, Stefan Arneo. I, he was, uh, he's a Winnipeg investor, um, done really well. I wrote a book called, uh, I think it was called. Uh, did you do a recent you know, seminar here? Uh, yes, he did, okay. yeah. Um, peep, is it something, money people deal? Money deal. Yeah, people, money, money deal. Yes. You need to have two of those. If you have two of those, you'll find the third, no problem. But the key is find the deal first. Find the deal, you have a team that helps, helps you out, the money will come to find you. So that's how you're going to get further ahead. Because the things that Gary is talking about in terms of 10, 20% increases, the real estate is, is like kicking everybody's butt in a sense of how much um, uh, growth there is relative to somebody working. Okay, imagine you're working, you still got to pay taxes and all the other expenses before you can actually, versus real estate. Right? Real estate, you can scale. Your job, you can't scale. So, um, who thinks lowest rate is the best? Yeah, it's important, mm -hmm. but not the most important. Okay, there's other factors that come into it. Lower price, lower so, price, lower price of the property. Lower, pri uh, lower pricing is yeah. important, mm -hmm. um, but I'll show you another thing that you should pay attention to. Um, maybe you could be able to borrow more mm -hmm. instead of like putting less down payment. Mm -hmm. That might be a factor. So it's all about the terms. Mm -hmm. Maybe a longer amortization. So that allows you to qualify, or maybe it allows you to count more of the rental income to help you qualify. So all these factors, maybe there's a, a combination of a mortgage of, with a line of credit uh, where as you pay down the balance, 
automatically becomes available line of credit space you can use for the down payment for the next place, right? So all these factors, but so not all mortgages are the same. So I'll show you a couple. So TD offers for a rental, say a really good rate, 259 for a five year fix, really good. Now you see some other higher ones like 279, 3.09, why would somebody want to go with that? At the bot comes down to what is the max mortgage that you can qualify for. TD would only give you 376 in this situation. Coast can give you 657. Van City can give you 703 for the same property. So which one would you prefer? Even though you have to pay a little bit more, you write off that interest anyways, right? Go terms are more important. It's still cheap money. It's very cheap money. If paying a higher interest rate allows you to earn 20% a year, okay, and the difference is only 0.5 in this situation, what do you want more? Right? So you need to focus on, the, on this. So rates are important, but may not be the most important because it's all about higher loan of value means higher uh, return on investment. Okay, so I can't get more mortgages. Um, most lenders are capping you at about four or five properties. Some will go up to 16 doors. Some don't really care. Um, as long as you have five max with them, they don't care what you have in terms of your portfolio. So where we actually learned how to do this was we had a, uh, an investor come to us uh, with 30 properties. He said, I got 30 properties all done with the branch. I can't get any more. And I said, yes, you can. Here's how we got on his 31st. And just last year, we got on his 40th under personal name at 3% bank rates. So he can continue growing because he, could, he has options in terms of getting his, building his portfolio. You either um, can qualify by yourself, that's a preference, because you, do, you keep everything to, for yourself, or you have to bring in a joint venture partner to qualify in that situation. Then you give up equity like uh, uh, 20, 30% in that situation. So even if you had to pay slightly higher rates, uh, you're still better off trying to get, uh, keep everything yourself as you're starting to build your portfolio. And even like B lenders, which is, there's like eight banks and then there's private, really expensive. Somewhere in the middle is B, which is, could be one to 2% higher, but it gives you the flexibility to grow your portfolio. So if you got a property that's really cash flows, you can afford to debt service, then do that instead of giving up equity in that situation. So at some point you're gonna probably need to be, as you grow your portfolio, you're gonna cut cap by the down payment that you have. So let's just say it's all gone. Then you're gonna find out, well, how am I gonna get it? So you got bring in partners to help s provide that funding to, for the down payment, as well as uh, mortgages you might not, no longer qualify for. So going back to that client that I was mentioning, his 40 properties was in a situation where uh, he didn't have a job. His, all of his income was from his rental. So he has no five, no, no job whatsoever, no T4, it was all rental income. And we still got them 3%. That's it. Wow. Yeah, no T4, no job. So, um, or you go commercial financing. At some point your uh, property, your portfolio will get big enough that you go to m multiple units. So when you go anything larger than typically four units, uh, you're gonna be looking at a multifamily in that situation. and. Um, commercial financing where they just look at the property itself and not you as much as on the individual side. So the property, it's self-sufficient, uh, basically carries all the expenses, um, then you're gonna be okay, okay? And private lenders is another option, depends on what you wanna do. And as Gary is gonna go through some of the fix and flip options, uh, we can talk about how uh, something like that can play a role in uh, allowing you to get the financing. I should not get an insured mortgage. So who, so anytime you have to put, le, you're putting less than 20% down, you're gonna pay 
CMHC or Genworth or, or Canada Guarantee uh, a premium for the mortgage to insure it. Uh, who does not want to pay that? Or who, who has put, bought a property with less than 20% down? Yeah. And you have to pay the, mortgage, the insurance on it. It's not a small amount. If you, uh, up to, with 5%, you have to pay 3.6% as a premium, which you'll never get back. So you might be thinking, well, why should somebody do that? Well, I'll show you. So if you had an option to buy a property where you're going to buy $400,000 property, and your down payment in that situation, 20% down, is going to be 80 k and your mortgage is 320 your mortgage payment is roughly about uh, 1200 bucks. So over the course of five years, there's no cash flow. You're basically every month giving money out, right? As there is a mortgage pay down, but that's from you, okay? Uh, there's appreciation of 2%. So at the end of uh, five years, you're basically, you're gonna gain, whoops. Uh, you're gonna gain, sorry. You're gonna gain um, 7,000 net. And kind of your return is about 8.85% in five years. So that's like uh, a percent something a, a year. Is that a very good return? No, right? So there's another way. So let's just say we're going to put 5% down instead, OK? Assuming that you can qualify, we're going to put 5% down. So our um, down payment is only going to be 20000 to buy the home, OK? So bigger mortgage, pay the insurance premium, bigger mortgage payment as well, $500 difference. So even more capital outflow from a cash flow perspective, okay? Uh, mortgage pay down, and then you got appreciation. So in five years, you're actually down. You're actually, you're not, you're, you're losing about 10% because everything's been going out. So where am I heading with this? Where I'm going with this is we're actually going to, with the remaining money that we have, that 60 k we're actually going to buy a property instead. Okay? We're going to buy a $300,000 property, and we're going to have a mortgage payment, so you're going to have your rent, and you're actually going to have um, some cash flow from it too. Okay? So even in, uh, you're going to have $200 cash flow in this situation. So you're going to have mortgage pay down, you're going to have your appreciation, and you're actually going to get 120% in five years from that property. So when you average the two, you combine them together between these, you actually buy, you've got a total uh, value of about 700000 in terms of the purchase price, as well as a bigger uh, mortgage, but the amount that you use for down payment is still 80 k And through the process as you combine everything, you're actually ahead further by 70 k in five years' time, just by having that rental property in the portfolio. So your return is close to 88% versus 8, 9% in five years. So this is a, a good way to, to approach it. Does that make sense? So when Gary nods, I'm thinking he's <laughs> Uh, hopefully I impressed them. Thank you guys. Thanks guys for watching my video. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Email me if you have any more questions. Thank you.